Hello, my name is Tracy Lewis. Um, I've been drawing ever since I was about five years old, and I started drawing houses. And, um, and I believe I wanted to be an artist as a child, but I was discouraged from doing so from those that were wiser than I. <laughs> they thought they were. Anyway, and I went to university and I tried everything, and towards the end I said, I, yeah, I still want to do art. So I knew I wanted to go back to art school, or I wanted to go to art school someday, uh, but I'd had enough of being in school for 17 years, so I went and lived my life for a while. I started a business called the Quacker Factory that we made these, uh, my partner at the time and I made these wooden toys, ducks and geese and penguins, and they had wheels with rubber feet and a stick, and you would push them with a stick and the feet would go flap, 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 flap. And we made three different sizes of sticks because they weren't just for children, they were for adults as well. And uh, part of that business helped pay me pay my art school fees, which I started the next year. I majored in animation. Um, I started, actually I was going to take lithography and sculpture because I like to move and you know lithography is hard work and sculpture you're moving all the time. But I took an animation cross, crossover course and just the light bulb went on over my head and I said, this is it. And so I wanted to do a, a double major with lithography, but he wouldn't let me. The teacher, Bob Evermon, who is wonderful and a, a friend, um, he said, no, it's too intensive. So guess what? I ended up sitting all day <laughs> at the drawing table, uh, but doing animation and I absolutely loved it. It's uh, you really feel like the ultimate creator because you start with nothing, then you have an idea, and uh, you put, in, in my case, I did mostly classical animation, so you know, you put the, you create your story, and then you put pencil to paper and draw your characters, and um, you give sound, you give them breath, everything from start to finish, you are like the ultimate creator, and it works well for Many, many uh, animators are introverts, uh, but we're kind of actors deep down. So an animator is the perfect way for a, a shy person to show their stuff, because they do it behind the camera rather than in front of the camera. Um, so over time, I animated for the National Film Board of Canada and on some independent projects. And that's when I lived in Vancouver. And then I moved to the island and I was, uh, I was pulled to the island, I guess I would say. I wanted to live rurally and I wanted to have a dog, and so I did. Uh, it wasn't the best place to do animation, so I started making these other wood toys. I should have brought one, oh well. Um, they're flip toys, so there's two sticks with an axle and an acrobat strung to the top, and you would squeeze the bottom and the acrobat would flip around, and I had many, many different designs jesters and bears and dogs and cats and there was even a whale um, and the elephant was hilarious it looked a lot like a Sandra Boynton elephant if you've ever seen Sandra Boynton she does wonderful children's books one of my favorites uh, so I did that and then I and I started teaching kids um, art in my home and that was the days before all this digital technology so we were literally drawing on film and making flip books and stuff like that um, and then, oh, and then a brief bit of history, I met someone, we had a child, and I, I did that for about four years, and then needed to get back in, into it, and I started making greeting cards. So I started with the greeting cards, and I had also, I kept in touch with the National Film Board, and I met my producer, and I had this idea to go to remote communities, First Nations communities, and create films with, uh, with artists, Aboriginal artists. And I would do some animation of them doing their work, and then I would do the segue in between each artist. Well, Eric had a similar idea, only different. So of course we went with his idea. <laughs> um, so the very first project I did was in Bella Coola, and I went up there, did an animation workshop with uh, about seven artists up there. And that was the pilot project for what is now the Our World project. So for a number, I guess since 2006, I've been traveling to remote communities, not, you know, not like 10 a year, sometimes only one a year, sometimes four, um, working with youth and creating films, getting them to tell their story. Uh, 
uh, one of my favorite things to do is um, translate other people's visions. So I like to, I seem to have a facility of pulling ideas out of people. And I just love to do it so much. Uh, uh, but lately, because of the COVID, I've been unable to do that. So I was speaking to Kathy. Does everybody know who Kathy is here at the Waterfront Gallery? Uh, and she wondered if I could create a teaching film for young boys because there were many activities for girls. Um, and many girls like to do animation too, of course, but lots of boys do. So she wanted something that boys would like. So I created a little film, How to Make a Thomatrope. And then I made another one using cut out letters and so on. And I'm still making them. So thanks to Kathy, she's inspired me to create a series of animated films that help children learn about animation at home. Because uh, depending on the, the home, most homes have the various equipment that you can make a film with. I mean, I've got a full studio, but kids can make a film with, a, with an iPhone or a, a tablet, uh, an iPad, and all, many kids have various forms of all those technologies. Um, the iPad, you can download a wonderful app called Stopmo, NFB Stopmo, and you can do sounds, special effects, titles, time lapse, um, all, it's just a wonderful tool. And I know lots of people have iPads these days, so I'm hoping to inspire some young animators out there, especially because who knows, I'm not sure when I'll be able to teach again. So that'll be a treat see if I need it. To, uh, oh, I'm a grandma. <laughs> I have a 14 year old grandson. He's possibly the most adorable child you've ever seen. <laughs> um, let's see. Yeah. Um, why do we, I do art? Because I have to, I guess. I can't help it. When I was teaching, I was teaching animation, stop motion animation at Shawnee Lake Schools for about nine years. And about halfway through, the ceramics teacher offered a ceramics class to uh, teachers uh, every Wednesday night. So I went there, I did you know two little pinch pot pots, and then I said, I want to make a house. <laughs> so I made a house, and I have not stopped since. I've always had a passion for houses. I started, as I said, when I was about five, and I think that all my houses are kind of made with warmth and whimsy, and they look quite magical when they're lit from within. Uh, it's, you can see some of them here, and uh, you, I, they work all as, as they are, but when you light them from within, uh, uh, they're quite magical. And if you, you put them on the, on the patio or um, in the house, whatever, it, lots of places. Some of them can go in the garden, not all of them, because if they're not fired high enough, at a high enough temperature, they'll absorb too much water out, when they're outside. But if they're under cover, that's... They, they can survive outside. I have tons outside, all the ones that broke. <laughs> they live in my garden. Um, I think art is essential, really, to humans. And like you can really notice now with the COVID, I think one of the greatest difficulties beyond sickness and death and dying is uh, that the arts are really suffering. So think of all the singers and musicians out there that would be entertaining people and the reason we go to these things is, is to feed our souls I think or your spirit or whatever you want to call it, the inside of us that loves to be inspired or loves to see people at their finest so the performers I mean especially I mean as a as an artist I can create stuff all day long you know every day but for, as a performer you can just imagine the problem for me is I can't sell my stuff, you know, because people aren't, all the art fairs are, are closed and the Christmas markets and all that. So, so I think it's essential to people's mental health that we have art in society just to create, we all need beauty in our lives. It's, I, believe, I believe it's essential. Beauty is essential. And some people, if you create your own beauty, great, but other people need to buy it <laughs> or find it. I mean, I find it in nature. A lot. So, my most recent film was a little. Uh, I used uh, flowers and sticks and grasses and rocks and stuff, and I made a little film. Um, and it sort of expressed my love of nature a little bit, anyway. 
I was really talking about um, sound and how you can create an, an, a, a feeling depending on what sound you use with a particular project. <laughs> I'm prone to funny faces. <laughs> So where are you taking your art from now? Mm. And you can also purchase these on our website. Okay. Um, so because we just don't know where we are in the world right now, I'm just going to continue making houses and cats and dogs and penguins and greeting cards. And I'm going to continue making these films because even after the COVID, they'll be helpful for students. And I hope to one day again do animation camps in my home. Um, I'm still, I still have galleries which sell my houses and cards and cats and dogs and one of them is at the Waterfront Gallery in Ladysmith. Uh, it's a wonderful little gallery with a beautiful support team and I'm really grateful that they invited me to do this today and I'm going to leave some of these houses behind so you'll be able to find some on their website. Uh, I think the gallery is closed at present but you can shop online. Um, Shall I say other places where I have them? Okay. Um, yesterday I delivered some houses to the gallery at Maddox Farm, and I'm on my way to Bowser to deliver some to the uh, Salish Sea Market. Um, I have some other shops, but those are kind of the, the key ones right now, is where there's another in Souk, and um, I'm from Duncan, and there's a shop there called Little Bird that has some of my houses. And the cards can be in Imagine That or at the Community Farm Store, all great places uh, with great, uh, just wonderful people, you know, to go support our economy. Um, so anyway, I don't plan to retire <laughs> ever. And uh, I just can't stop doing what I do. So stay tuned, see what, I'll, see what I'm going to do next. <laughs>